This is Michael, KE4EST, and I want to do a quick little overview of this antenna analyzer that Jack Purdom, W8TEE, and K2ZIA came up with. When this comes out, it'll be all open source. Uh, right now, uh, unless you know Jack or somebody or whatever, uh, you won't be able to see anything about this because it'll be coming out in a future issue of QST. So if you just hang tight for a few months or less, you'll uh, see this in QST magazine. Now this board here I ordered uh, from them and I've uh, built everything on it myself. You can see here, it's not professional soldering, but I guess it ain't too bad. Um, I bought all the parts myself, everything, um, and put it all together. And it's made to be modular. <clears throat> it has used a uh, the uh, Arduino Pro Mini here. And this has got the Atmel 2560 chipset on it, uh, chip on it. It's uh, like a miniature version of the Arduino Mega. You can get those off eBay. And you can get them with these headers I already sorted in, or you can do it yourself. I got that one a little crooked, huh? Anyway, and then it uses this DDS board here. And it'll, it's made modular. Like I say, it's made plug in here. This will plug into there. Well, let's get the camera on it. It plugs in like that. I'm not going to actually plug it in. Let's going to set it down. This goes in. And this will go in right there. And then on the other side, you can plug in your LCD display. It uses TFT. Uh, so it's really nice, pretty display. And I'll show you one of, uh, I'm building two of them. This is mine, it's been put together, works fine. I just took it apart to show this video. Um, here's the one for my buddy. Move this light over. Okay. And you can see, now I've added code, modified, I've heavily modified this code. Uh, not the core of it main, mostly, but uh, I did a couple things in the core, but I don't really want to reveal those yet until this thing comes out. Um, but I've added stuff like it doesn't say this here, and you see this call sign on here. It's not my call sign. This is a friend of mine, KE4PTP Clyde. He, uh, I'm making this for him, and I got this case here off Amazon, eBay, or something. And then I printed it out on this clear sticky paper uh, and put this on there. And uh, it's got some off switch in here. There's a power jack. And you can put in batteries in here too if you want to set up with batteries. And it's got a rotary encoder it uses right here. That you can, and you see at the top it's moving those menu uh, selections there. And then you select what you want. I want to do an analysis. Okay. I'm going to do a new scan. And let's go down here to 40 meters. Okay, and it's hard to see on the camera, but you can select your frequency, so your starting frequency. So we'll start, uh, we'll go band edge to band edge. And it's going to scan it. Okay, the minimum SDR, SWR is 1.19 at 71.56. That's another thing I changed. It. There's a couple other guys out there I know that's making these. That looks different up here because before it just showed a whole. The rest of this would have been a bunch of zeros. And I got rid of the zeros and added kilohertz. It's just a little easier because all of us hands, especially ones that's been doing this for 20, 30 years like I have, you. Let's meet on 7240, you know, not 7240000.000.000. So, anyway, I did that. And you can see there's the SWR and this little point here shows you the, the lowest one it found and we just click in it comes back up now it's also you can view uh, view minimums if I just click all there it's going to show me a little chart now all I've scanned in is 40 and 60 meters but it'll show you 
where you, and if this was all filled in, you'd have, you know, this going all the way down. You can kind of at a glance look and see like, where everything's at. And it's got a doubly prone memory in here to save stuff too. And it's also got an SD card. And if we go to options, I want to show you. You can save the scan you just did, um, plots and tables. I'm going to do an overlay. And I think it's that one. Now this is going to show you, okay. That white line is what I've done earlier. And this is what I just did. This yellow line here. And I had to go out and tweak a little bit on the antenna. And you see it's came down pretty good across the band here. So that's a real handy feature when you're trimming your antenna. Just to see how much it's changed. Um, but that's pretty much it. It works really good. I've tested it with the SWR meter and everything, and it seems like it does really good. Um, I've added a couple more things in it uh, in the menu that's not there yet. I don't know if Jack's going to add any yet, any what more he might add to it before it, it goes public with it. Um, like I said, it'll be open source, and uh, I may do another video later and show some more. So show some more. Anyway, there it is. Thanks for everybody for watching. Um, and uh, hey, like I said, well, real quick, let me say this: for uh, maybe fifty dollars in parts or less. Uh, hmm, yeah, maybe just about fifty. Especially if you had to buy everything uh, from scratch. I got a really big, as they say, junk box, but I do have that. But I also got plenty of drawers that I've got all my stuff organized in. I've got plenty of resistors, transistors, yada yada yada. So not very expensive but it does a whole lot of features that some of the SWR mirrors on the market that cost a whole lot more don't do so it does you know get back into ham radio spirit and make your own stuff it does make a difference sometimes um, when you do that anyway thanks everybody for watching and uh, catch me next time this is K4ES2